chakula kigenjani mwako ndio ni chakula cha kiroho kutoka kwa Bwana aliyetuagiza akisema wapeni ninyi chakula hapa chakula tv utapata mlo kamili wa kiroho uliosheheni virutubisho vyote muhimu kwa ukuaji wako kiroho yaani mafundisho maombi na maombezi kutana na wapishi mahiri ambao watahakikisha unapata chakula bora na halisi Unasubiri nini jiunge na familia hii kubwa ya chakula tv sasa hii ni chakula tv uhakika wa maisha chakula kigenjani mwako ndio ni chakula cha kiroho kutoka kwa Bwana aliyetuagiza akisema wapeni ninyi chakula hapa chakula tv utapata mlo kamili wa kiroho uliosheheni virutubisho vyote muhimu kwa ukuaji wako kiroho yaani mafundisho maombi na maombezi kutana na wapishi mahiri ambao watahakikisha unapata chakula bora na halisi Unasubiri nini? Jiunge na familia hii kubwa ya Chakula TV sasa. Hii ni Chakula TV, uhakika wa maisha. Hallelujah 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 glory be to God our mighty God that has given us today another wonderful day and we have come into his presence again and we have come under his feet to hear what he has for us for we believe in him whatever he has for us the bible says that is our life and that we have our being in him glory to mighty God and i greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much for joining us today as God has given us this uh, another day that we have the English service and we have got a very important message today that will remind us of the very important thing that we need to do as we are Christians who continue to be and to enjoy having God in our lives. And as I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I would like also to ask you to do something as we are opening and starting our session today. My name is Teacher Baraka Benjamin and I'm here from Chakula uh, Chakula TV uh Uhakika wa Maisha. And yes, wakawaambia wapeni ninyi chakula. And I'm thankful that you are with us today and we would like to be with you as we start to the end of the today's program. Please welcome and be 
with us as we start up to when we finish up the session that we have today. I believe God has prepared a very important message for me and a very important message for you. Something that he has told me many years ago. I've been living by trying to see and try to do what God has instructed me to do from the very first, from the verses that we are going to read today. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. And as we start also, I wish to ask you to do something that you also ask others to join our program today. You ask others by sharing to them the link of our, our today's session so that those who are not aware maybe that we have this one or in one or another they do not have the access directly uh, from the YouTube. They may now get the access. You can send this one. We came to realize even the normal text can send this one and people can watch uh, wherever they are. They can join us and they can enjoy what God has prepared and has made ready for them. Glory to Jesus Christ. And again we have prepared a very important event that we are expecting to have on 30th of August, uh, 31st, up to the first day of September. We have our fourth spiritual camp, fourth spiritual camp, and we are glad to inform you that we are officially open for the registration, and you are welcome to start the registration. You can register yourself through our contact that we have, 07 six four uh then triple four nine hundred you can uh now register for the spiritual camp that we have prepared and we want to see that we meet god there as god has planned for us it will be i believe another important day it will be another important event that we have in our life now this time we will not meet where we have met for the far past three spiritual camps but we will meet somewhere else area that is good enough and big enough to accommodate our number as we saw the last area could no longer now accommodate our number as many people are thirsty to come and worship and pray and have god solving their problems so this time we will meet at the and it's uh, here again in Dar es Salaam. And we would like you to register as we start these registrations so that when we start the matters of uh, spiritual camp, you will also be part of it. Glory be to Jesus. We are so thankful to God that we have already uh, organized the fourth camp. I know we don't just organize, but God has called us to do this. For he has prepared something for me, for he has prepared something special for you also. That's why he is giving us this invitation. He is giving us this chance that we come into his presence for the three days that he has set apart and he has sanctified them I believe so that we can have this time with him. Glory to Jesus Christ. So welcome to the spiritual camp season 4 that will be from 30th of August up to the first day of uh, September 2024. Now I would like to pray, then we start our discussion today. It is a very important thing that God has planned and has prepared for us today. May I pray and we start. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are still celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior in this world. Thank you very much for being our God. It is time that, Lord, we come into your presence. We believe we have something to share to us. There is something in this life we need to understand. We are in some kind probably of darkness and the only light that we expect to have and the only light that we have the bible says it is your word this word that you have for us it is the light unto our ways and now we pray that you give us the light as you have prepared for us again open our understanding lord jesus give us the understanding father that we understand what we need to do in this life that we have for you said in this world we need to fight we have so many things that we fight but you told us to be courageous and the courage we get from your word may this word today encourage us to continue to do what you expect us to do as far as your salvation is concerned in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name I pray and I pray for everyone who is joining us right now and for those who will join us later at their own time that Lord you be with them and you teach them by your Holy Spirit. Let him teach them all and give them something special at least one word as one man asked you in the Bible that Jesus can you just say a word and my servant will be healed and you just mentioned the word and the servant was healed even as today we believe we just have one word that is good enough to take us to another step to take us to another better life in jesus mighty name we pray and in this name we believe amen hallelujah to jesus christ today we have a topic that we are going to uh, to go about it that when god gives you rest when god gives you rest god gives people rest god has this to give rest 
to his people. But the question is, the challenge that today we want to see is what we need to do when we are given such an opportunity in our lives. And let us start to discuss this one by reading from the second Samuel chapter 7 and from verse 1 and the probably verse 2 and the other following verses. Yes, 2nd Samuel chapter number 7 from verse 1 and the following verses. Follow me careful as we are reading this one and we read this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. After the king was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest. This is our concern that the Lord had given, this is David, the Lord had given David a rest from all his enemies around him. From all his enemies around him. Verse 2, the Bible says, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a palace of cedar while the ark of God remains intent. While the ark of God remains intent. Okay, in a tent. Verse 3, Nathan replied to him, uh, to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. Then in verse 4, In that night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Verse 5, the word of the Lord came to Nathan uh, at night and told him this way. Go and tell my servant David. This is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? Verse 6. The Bible says, I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Verse 7. The Bible says, Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Mm -hmm. Verse 8. The Bible says, Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture and from following the flock to be ruler over my people Israel. I may end up there because what I want us to see today, I have already uh, seen it in the verses that we have read, verse 1 up to verse number 7. Praise be to Jesus. It happened that we all know David did during his reign as a king, and even before he became a king, ever since uh, uh, the prophet uh, Samuel anointed him that you will become the next king after Saul is out of the kingdom, you will be out of the, out of the throne, you will become the next king of Israel. David started to have wars, and Saul was the first one to try to fight him, to at least try to kill him so that his son could succeed him. And that one was uh, the other, uh, the son of uh, the son of Saul, uh, Jonathan, who was there to succeed him. That is what uh, King Saul expected. After him, there comes his son. But he has already messed up with God. He misbehaved. He did not follow and obeyed all that God told him to do. And therefore, God had to take him out of the throne and bring another person to the throne. So from that moment, David started to have war around him. He had gone about wars all the days of his life. To the point when he became the king, he also had the wars. The Philistines used to come to fight. Many times, his commanders went around to fight all the time. David had been in wars. All his days, David had been in wars. Fighting this enemy, enemies from outside, enemies from within, the enemies from everywhere. They were used to come try to fight against David. So all the time that he used to fight, he never sat down and think over bringing up something new. Come up with another idea. Something probably that never existed before. Something that nobody has ever done before. David never thought of it because all the time, his heart, his mind, even his prayers were all dedicated to the wars that may the Lord give him all 
the victories as he go about and fight his enemies. That is all David used to do. That is all David had around him. Even when he went to pray, you can read from the Psalms how he used to pray. He used to pray for the enemies. He used to pray for God to help him, to encourage him, to give him the strength to fight and to continue to fight all the time. That has been his prayers. And of course, that has been his life. All he could think of whenever he comes back home, coming back to his palace, all he could think, which enemy have we conquered today? Which nation have we defeated today? And which one is next? Should I now start to arrange my enemy, my, my, my army, prepare it, ready for the next enemy that is about to come? Or should we now go and follow the enemies? Because the wars that they had, some of the enemies used to come, try to fight them there, but others, David had to go before they come. So he was always coming back, trying to think maybe we should try to organize ourselves. How many men have we lost in the last battle? How many soldiers do we still have? What do we need? This is all he could think of all the time. But then you see here in chapter 7, the Bible starts by telling us from verse 1, after the king was settled in his palace and the Lord, not himself, and the Lord had given him rest. There is something that the Bible tries to tell us here. That all the days David had not got a rest. He had been here and there trying to fight. But at one moment, the Lord God Almighty, at least he gave him rest. That for once in his life, he could sit down. He could sit and rest. This is what we want to see today. When God gives you rest. When God gives you rest, and may the Lord God give you the rest that you need in your life. May the Lord give you the rest as he is responsible for giving us the rest that we need in this life. So the Bible says God gave David the rest. The rest from all his enemies around. You can see the Bible says he had enemies around him. So if we turn back, you find enemies. If we look forward, he sees enemies. If you look on the right, on the left, all the sides, David had these wars had the wars around him every time. The wars that are coming, trying to defeat the nation. Then every, every here and then, David used to come to the wars. But it happened that once in his life, he got to rest. And what is the good thing that David brought up as he came to the rest? This is my concern. See what David did here. The Bible says, verse 2, he said to Nathan, this is David. Can we go to that book again? Samuel chapter, the second Samuel chapter 7 and verse 2. Here David says, after he had been given rest by his God, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a palace of Syria. Why did the ark of God remains in a tent? The, the new idea David came up with is here. Here I am living in. So all the time David used to come in and out. Used to come in and out. He never noticed that there is a difference between where he dwells, where he lives, and where the ark of covenant, the ark of God is. He never noticed that there is a difference between these two places. That the Lord is been, he has been in the tent ever since Moses built that tent. Remember in the book of Exodus. Ever since then, all these judges came by. All these great men of God came by. Up to this time, all this came by. God had been in the tent. Moving from one place to another in a tent. Remember, we have this one. The Bible says we had this Ark of Covenant. Uh, the ark of God, whereby they had God with all that he had for them as a symbol that God is with them. So he has been moving around with the Israelites while in the tent. But the Bible says the Israelites managed, I don't know who built this one, probably Saul built it or David himself, he built a palace for the kingdom. Okay, so he is in the palace, but he never realized that he has been in the palace, but the ark of God is not in a good place as he is in a good place. So, when he was given rest, the first thing he could think of, the moment he was at rest, the Bible says, his mind is thought of something. His mind popped up and brought up the new thing that David, look around. Do you see where you are? Do you see where you are sleeping? Do you see where you are? Do you see people around you? Do you see how beautiful the place you are is? But have you, David, noticed that when you go out to the Lord, when you go to that ark, when you go to that tent, have you noticed there is a difference? The quality of the tent and the quality of where you are, have you realized they are not the same? 
So when he was at rest, it's when he could think of that mm, there is a difference. Look where I am. He's telling Nathan, here I am living in a palace. Here I am surrounded by every good thing of Israel. Every good thing is around me. But where is the ark of God? Where is it? It is inside the tent. So David thought, oh, all these days have been going to the tent. Praying in the tent, meeting God in the tent. But after talking to God, I come back to sleep in a better place than a tent. You know the difference between being in a tent and being in a palace. There is a big difference. So he never thought of the difference that existed between the two. That had been there between the tent and its palace. But by this time he was at rest. This is what I want you to understand today. When he was at rest is when he thought of, is when he realized that God is not living in a good place as he is living now. There is when David noticed, may God help you to understand this in Jesus' name. That David came up with the idea that he realized this place where I sleep, the place where I eat, the place where I do all this, where I do my meetings, where I call my officials, where people who come to visit me come here and there, we meet. It's a very good place, better than a place where God is right now. So David thought of God building for God a house and according to the Bible this is the very first ever time that the matter about building the temple was brought up to this world. Before David nobody thought of it starting from Abraham back then going all the way to Jacob and many others. They just used to build the altars and go. Building the altars and go. Building the tent as Moses did so that God could continue with them because they were still on the way. Remember in the wilderness there, they used just to fight all the time. They never rested there. So God was just in the tent and we thank that he was at least with them in that tent. So he had this God in his heart that I don't know who will ever come to realize that I have been in the tent all these years with the Israelites. All the time I've been moving with them, I have been in the tent. Nobody has ever thought of it. So they continue to have God in the tent. All this time, everybody is busy with the wars, busy with the fighting, busy trying to win, win uh, this one and that one. All this time, nobody thought of this one. But when God gave them the rest, this is a good thing we have today. When he rested, it's when his mind came. When he thought of this one, when he came back to his senses, then he realized, mm, this is not right. God has never been in a temple. Nothing like this one has ever been built for him. So David was the first one ever on earth to think of this one, to bring up the idea about having, about having God in a temple, building for God a house, taking God out of the tent. Imagine taking God out of the tent. And I, you know, sometimes I do wonder that God has been in the tent, he has been quiet in the tent. All these years I've been in the tent and he has been quiet. As if he's satisfied by being in the tent. As if it is okay for him to be in the tent. But what he, God knew is nobody has ever come to rest. To the point that he could think that God is in the tent and not in the house like men. Mm. And he told nobody. He just remained with this one quiet all the time. When they go and ask him for his help, he's there to help them. When they pray, he's there to answer their prayers. When they go and say, God, we have been defeated. We are in this problem. God writes there, reacts and help them. But he never said something like this to anyone. In fact, if God did not even tell David, but you see David himself bringing up the idea. Why? God had given him rest. My question, if you are at rest, what do you do for God? If you are at rest, if you are at rest, what do you do? What do you have? What do you bring up as a new thing? When God gives you the rest, what do you do? Unless you say you never come to rest. Unless you say, and if you never come to this one, we have a prayers today that we pray for God to give you the rest. For whenever you rest, whenever you calm down yourself, whenever you do not have anything that is troubling your mind or your heart, whenever you are fine, calm, you will bring up something good. 
You will come up with the very best idea. You will bring up something good for the church, for the body of Christ. If not that and for your family, if not for your family, for our nations, you will come up with something good, something special, never heard before, never seen before. Remember, new ideas are not there, are not through yet. We have not exhausted the matters of new ideas. New innovations are still to come. As we see always, scientists and the others are coming up with new things and we say, wow, look at this one. Long ago, we never, we just had phones but they came to the point we, we have now the smartphones who can think of what next will come to this earth if people get this time so it's very important to get this one that when we come to rest what do we do david is giving us the example that when god gave him rest around him he had peace around him for once in his life, ever since he was born. Remember, he used to be in the wilderness there, taking care of the flock. So in the flock there, remember the enemies he had. He had the lions, he had the bears coming against the flock. So even there, he never rested. So when he came to this point, he never rested. When he, before he became the king, he would never rested. When he became the king in his reign, he never rested. But for the first time God gave him rest, David brought up a good idea. David came up with something new. The idea of building for God the house to dwell in. And no longer God should dwell in a tent. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. So this is a challenge that I want us to take today. If God gives you rest, what do you do with the rest that you have? If God gives you peace, in other words, if you have peace of mind, we do call it. If you are in this situation, everything is now okay. At least you, know, you do not have so many troubles around you. You can come to your senses. You can come to yourself and be the really you. By that time, nobody is bothering you. In your family, the matters probably you had diseases attacking you, had these problems. But now you are all fine. You are coming from the financial problems. Now you are settled financially. Now you are settled in the matters of peace. Now your area, your community is all at peace. What do you do? People think by that time we don't do anything. I have shown you the first guy here, David, who did not just continue to rest. When he rested, it's when he thought of something new. It's when he brought up a new idea. And this is the importance why we need the rest. And may God give you the rest in Jesus' name. And may God grant you this rest as he did to David. Probably when he gives you that one, you will think of something different. You will bring up something new. Are you, you yourself, you'll be surprised and you'll be amazed by what you have come up with. The idea that you have come up with. Maybe I remind you of something. If you have experienced this around your, your, your community, whenever people are busy going in and out in the house because of many problems, they may not notice that something is not right placed somewhere. But one day when you all come to rest, when you come to uh, in your house and today you do not have any problem and you all rest, it's when you realize probably the window has never been closed all these days. A window is broken and nobody has ever noticed something maybe a chair is not okay it is broken but nobody noticed the curtains are dirty and nobody has noticed that we have dirty curtains they are there always they are there nobody has ever noticed the house is dirty we have got the all these troubles around the house but whenever we come to this rest, it's when we now realize whenever you come to bed a day that you have got rest and really rest from god is when you realize your ceiling needs paint why? By that day, you have come to rest. Your mind has come back to you. The really you is back there. The really you with all the peace. Now you think of something different. You think of something new. You think of something that is not has not been there. I remember one day somebody told me something. Uh, had this one it was be called early in the morning that a uh, certain house has been broken a house of uh, a certain government leader it has been broken and the thieves have stolen some things there so the guy woke up and he went out with all it was a policeman went out dressing up in any way just rushing there because of this uh, political leader there whose house has been broken and when reached there they tried to see the matter assess all these matters when they were all done with everything then one officer asked this officer have you seen how you have dressed up today yourself have you seen the guy was not aware of what he had but after the, some time when all the matter were done then he looked at himself and said hey how what kind of dressing is this one today how did i put the uniform in this way why am i telling you this one when you have the rest 
is when you may think of yourself sometimes. Is when you may think of something new. So the question that we have today is if God has given you peace in your marriage, what is the use of that peace? A challenge that we need to answer today. If God has given you, you are coming from all the troubles around. You have passed by many years of difficulties. And now you have at least good years. What do you do with the good years that you have? What do you do with these good years that you have? Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. What do you do when God gives you the rest? David, when he was given this rest, once in his life, once in his life, he thought of building up the temple. Once in his life, he thought of this one. And after this one, remember, if you read the next following chapters there, you find him going back to his normal life. The life of challenges, the life of fightings. He never thought of this one again. He just prepared things to build the house, the, the, the house of God, and then the matters went on. But this particular moment, David himself says, today God has given me rest and my mind has reminded me, my mind has challenged me to realize that where I am and where God is are two different. I am in a better place than where God is right now. Where did he get this idea? The idea could be there because David came into this rest that God gives you. May God grant you this rest in Jesus' name. May he give you the favor that you come to this rest. But now, when you are in that situation, what do you do? In other words, why do you need rest from God? Why should God give you peace? Why should God take out all the problems around you? You wish and you pray for God to take out all these problems, to help you solving all the challenges around. You sometimes sit down and think, a day when I will have, I'll get through all these problems. Oh, I'm waiting for that day. I wish for that day to come as early as possible. By that time now you are in that situation, God has now answered your prayers. The troubles are no longer there. What do you do with that moment? Do you think it's the moment that nothing new can come up? Do you think it's the moment that you cannot do anything? No. The Bible shows us here, David is the first one, that when he was given the rest, he brought up something new. He came up with the idea. Imagine the temple that we talk of. Even today that temple is there. It was the idea brought up by David. Just imagine. If we all come to rest, and if at all we are in rest, and think of, imagine of how many good things can we come up with. Just imagine of how many good things we can bring up with if we use the opportunity and take advantage of this situation that our lives, at least for once, we are in this rest. Imagine of what we can come up with. But we do not use this one. We do not take advantage of the situation around us. We just take this one for granted that we are just given this one. Let me take you to a certain example here. I don't know if we've ever thought of it that way. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 3. Let me show you something. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 3. Then we will read verse, after verse 2, we will read verse 18, the same chapter. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 3. Look at this verse carefully. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested. On it, God himself, he rested. So it's not only us that needs rest, even God, he needs the rest. So on this day, God rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. Let me explain this one. Thank you for the verse. Let me explain something here. By this time, if we are reading Genesis chapter 2, we know the creation matters are all done by this time. That God had finished the matters of creation. The Bible says this sixth day that God used to uh, create different things are done. So he is through with the creation. Now the Bible says when he finished up creating everything, it's where now God came to rest. Now, when God came to rest, is there anything new that God brought up? The question we need to ask ourselves. After God had finished all the creation matters, did he bring up something new? Do we have anything new from this moment? Oh, God has finished everything. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and the last verse there, verse 31 there, and everything God has created, behold, it is very good. After God has finished creating every good thing, was that all? The Bible says in chapter 2, remember chapter 1 is the creation. So he is done with the creation. Chapter 2, the Bible says God rested. I want you to notice when he rested in this very chapter, when he finished up all the matter, is when 
number 18. Let's go to chapter 2, verse 18. Verse 18, the Bible says, verse 18. We have read verse 3. Now let's go to verse 18 and see what God came up with. When he rested, the Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Hallelujah. The idea of marriage was not there before. But after God had finished everything and rested, it's when he realized that it is not good for the, uh, for the man to be alone. Just look at this word. It is not good. This word is coming here saying it is not good. Can you please follow me carefully with this one? What I want to, to, to note. If you read chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, you see that everything God created was very good. So the word very good or the word good had been there in chapter 1 and all this coming on. All this had this one word, good, very good, good and very good. But here, after he rested, is when he realized something is not good. So for the first time in the Bible, the word not good is used here. He thought that everything is okay. Everything is well. But now, after he had rested, is when he came up with a new idea. It is not good. Although everything is good, but after resting, God realized something is not good. And said here, a man should not be alone. I will make for him a helper suitable for him. So when he rested, he came up with a new thing. This is how we should use our rest. My challenge to you and my question to you. What do you do? What do you do? Felista calls this one a missing puzzle. Okay. And you, Felista, when you rest, what do you do? When God gives you such a rest, like what he had here, the Bible says he rested and he realized it is not good. For the first time, it is not good. He has been saying everything is good. Everything is very good. Every, but now after rest, he said, mm -mm, something is not good. And what is it? This man is not complete. This man is missing something. Something is not there. What is it? He had to make for him a helper. It was God's idea to bring up this one. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. I want you to note that when God had rest, it's when he brought up the marriage idea. So whenever we come to rest, God is expecting us to do something. Whenever God gives us this rest, he is thinking of this one. We need to be innovative whenever we get this chance. Whenever we come to rest, we need to do something. We don't just rest for the sake of resting. Mm -mm. We are not just resting for that sake. We do not give Satan maybe the opportunity that we are now resting. But what we need is when we rest, we must come up with something. We must bring up a new thing into this world. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. All right. Consider the next one again. The Bible says after that verse, let's go to verse, uh, uh, to verse 19 there. Genesis chapter 2, verse 19 and the following verses. I want you to note the next thing that we have here. Look out. Verse 19. Now the Lord uh, God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the beasts of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever, whatever the man Whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. Okay, verse 20, the Bible says, So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds of the air, and all the beasts of the field. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. Okay, no suitable helper. Verse 21, the Bible says, So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. What do we call this deep sleep? Uh, deep uh, sleep. To rest. And while he was sleeping, he was resting, he took out of the man's rib and closed up the place with the flesh. Verse 22. The Bible continues by saying, Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. Okay. Verse 23 now. The Bible says, The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman, for she was taken out of man. Hallelujah. So, I want you to note the next thing here. Another example that we have. 
Adam was given a task to name all the animals. You can imagine how many animals do we have on earth. You can imagine how many living creatures are there on this earth. Adam was given the task to name them. No matter the differences we have in language, that in Swahili we call this one this, and in another language you call this one. Okay, but Adam was the one to give us that we need to name. The nomenclature science is Adam who started with it, naming according to the characters that were coming. Because he had to consider the character. He was looking for somebody suitable for him, but no one was seen suitable for him. So he had to name them all who were coming there. So you can imagine he was not addressed by that time that he has to th think of this one this one comes with this one this one uh, uh, has these characters this one portrays this one this one all this he had to name them and they were out there none of them could be uh, suitable for adam what next after he had all the day so busy i don't know how many days he used to name all these animals and all these creatures but after all this as no one was seen suitable for him what next he had to rest after all this thinking of everything, Adam had to rest. Hallelujah. So God had to force him to go to sleep. Why? He needs this rest. For when he rests, is when God has the chance to bring up something new. If he rests, God will have this one. Now, this is the chance to come up with something different. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. I don't know if you understand what we have here. Oh, I know. We were created at rest. And it should be rest. <laughs> we were created from that one. Okay. So imagine this man Adam had to rest. When he rested, the Bible says, it's when God had the chance to go to Adam. Why didn't he go there before? Because Adam was very busy. Busy doing one, two, three, four. Busy naming all the animals. Busy trying to see if any of this can fit if any of this could fit in his life, but he found none and he could not even sleep. Imagine the Bible says God made him to fall asleep. That means Adam was not ready to sleep. He was still looking around trying to see if he has finished every animal and every other creature around. He was still looking around. So God had to force him to rest. Adam, you cannot come up with somebody like this one you are looking for. You cannot bring up the idea. I myself, God, thought of the new idea when I rested. So for you also to get the new thing, Adam, we need rest. And Adam had to rest. He had to sleep. When he slept over, by that time, God had the chance to bring something new. The very first operation God did. The very first he was done. The Bible says God had to take one rib out of Adam and cover that place by the flesh. Okay. And he, God made out of that rib. He made this woman and brought her back to Adam. When Adam woke up from his sleep, a very deep sleep, a very good rest, is when he realized this one I have never met around the garden. This one is a different one. And I will name her after myself. She will be called a woman coming from man. This one is suitable for me. So the idea Adam had after he had the rest. So you can imagine if Adam never fell asleep, where would the woman be by now? Because this is what we needed. A man needed to sleep. He needed this rest. When he rests is when he thinks of something new. When he rests is when he bring up, brings up something different. A new thing came to this world. A very new one. What is it? A woman. A very beautiful thing. Imagine Adam had all these animals and none of them could fit. But for the first time, the very first time, something that can fit in his life is here already. Is standing right in front of him. And this is Eve. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. If we need something new, we need rest. If we are to come up with something different, to become very innovative, we need to rest. The rest that God gives us is for the purpose, has the intention within it, has a use of it. What is it? God expects us to use that one to come up with something new. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. So my question is, if you are, if you are, if you are at rest, if you are that way, if God has given you this in all that you are doing, what do you do? Maybe I should show you something 
different in the Bible. This is not a very good example, but let me show you something else. The book of Luke chapter 12 and the verse, the book of, of Luke uh, chapter 12 and the verse 16. Luke chapter 12 from verse 16. Let me show you a certain man in the Bible who was about to get to rest. And this is what he could think of. And he told them a parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. Okay? Then, number 6, 7, verse 17. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Okay? If you don't have a place to store, verse 18. Then he said, This is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build the bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. Okay. Verse 19. The Bible says, And I will say to myself, You have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. What is the other way? Rest. Eat, drink, and be merry. So this guy, he wants to take advantage of God's rest that he has given him. Take life easy. Rest now. And what will he be doing as he rests? The Bible says he will just be doing three things. Eating and drinking and celebrating. That is all the man was think, could think of. Then Let us see if this was correct. Verse 20. Let us see the appeal that was made in heaven. But God said to him, you fool. The name changed. I don't know if you have noticed. The name has already changed. He was not a fool before. He wasn't. The Bible says the farm of a certain man. He was a man. But now he's no longer a man. The Bible says you fool. Don't think God did not know his name. He had his name before. But now he is a fool. Remember it's Jesus himself talking about this. So he said in the beginning this was a man. But now after he thought of how he will use the rest being given to him. This opportunity. His name has to be changed. He's no longer just a man. The Bible calls him a fool. Why is he now a fool? This very night. Your life will be demanded from you. Then, who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This very night, your life will be demanded from you. And who demands this life? Who demands this life? Who demands? This is a question we need to ask ourselves. Who demands life? That means in heaven there, there are appeals made before God. There are those who could not sit down and say, yes, it is okay. Imagine God is giving this man such a thing. Now, if the Bible says this farm over this man, thank you for the verse. If the Bible says this man's farm had this production more than the production he had before, that means before this one, the man used to suffer a lot for him to just bring up this cross have his farm producing. He had to challenge himself. He had so many unrest because of the farms. But this year, he noticed that what I see in the farm and the size of my stores are not the same. These stores cannot take all this. So what I will do is, I will bring them all. First of all, I need to break this down and to build the bigger than these ones okay then i will collect in all that i have from my farms and after i do that i'll have rest so what will he do by that time he has rest this is the question what will he be doing see what he did he just said it i will be eating i'll be drinking and being celebrating is this all you can use you are resting for that god has blessed you with all this so all you can think is just eating you fool man God came down and changed his name. You are a fool, you man. You cannot think of something different. All you could think of is eating to yourself. All you could think is to satisfy your own soul. You can satisfy your own body. Is that all you can think of? You don't even think about maybe your children. You don't think about other people. You think I have brought all this just for you? Do you think I have just given you all this? You could have rest just for yourself? You are such a very selfish man. And today, the appeal has brought before me God. And this is the appeal. They demand your life. You cannot continue to be there. And the question I have to you, who will be the heir to all that you have? Who will inherit what you have collected? This is the question I'm just asking you. Who will do that? 
because you have not even written down the will. So who is going to take, take, to take care of all this? Who will be in charge of all this? You have not written. Now, let's forget about what this one is, but let's consider one thing here, that the Bible says, when he thought of just eating and drinking, God could not understand this one. That I have given him rest in the finances, in his farm. So everything is just very well. He's building up the bigger stores than what he used to have. And I believe these stores had all these, the pest control methods and all this, uh, everything in place so that these crops can be preserved for many years. Yes. So all he could think of is just eating to himself. Remember, this is not the first person who had this more of the production. This is not the first one. So, if Jesus is giving us this example now, we need to think of, we need to think of something here. Joseph's days in Pharaoh, remember, they had to collect food around Egypt for the famine that is to come. Do you remember that time? They had to collect. For who? Read the Bible. Joseph never thought of himself. Neither did Pharaoh. They never thought of themselves. The Bible says Pharaoh agreed to Joseph's idea of having the collection and the supplies of food being stored for the nation. Not for themselves. Not for, David, not for Joseph. But for the nation. And remember, when other people from other nations came there, they used to sell food to them. So, God gave them that one, not for them, but they thought of other people. That was the idea. That was the thing. When you are given such opportunity, it is time to help others. Listen to me. When God gives you rest, it is the time to help others. One good thing you can come up with, you have the rest to help others. That's what we expect. You are given such a good time so that you can help others. Remember, when you are in trouble, you can't think of others. When you are in trouble in your finances, you cannot help others. When we come and ask you for help, you will just tell us, please, don't you see what I'm going through right now? Don't you see all the medical services that I have to pay for? Don't you see all the bills that I have? Don't you see that I'm not doing well in my business? Yes, we see. We may not ask you for that. But when now you have all this... God has given you. Why has he given you? Why has he brought you to this? At least you have the rest. God has a purpose for it. It's not the purpose as what you see this man did here. The Bible says he did not do the right thing. Joseph could do the same. Pharaoh could do the same. That okay, you have food for this country. We have food for myself and you Joseph. So let us rest, drink and marry just like this guy here. Mm -mm. That is not what they could think of. Why? The entire nation was waiting for them. And of course, the whole world had no food. Only in Egypt, food could be available. So people used to go to Egypt to get food. So they, Joseph knew God has given us this food. The rest, peace of mind that we have food. Not for us, but for others. When you have rest, it's time to think of others. When you have such a time, it is time that you think of others. Hallelujah. You think of others. You think of something different. That's what God expected from us. Not to continue thinking about ourselves. Not trying to see about ourselves. For instance, if you, if you ask young men and young women, those who are not probably in marriage, they do not have good jobs, let's say, by now. They don't have this good income uh, by now. If you ask them, what do you see in the future? What do you wish in the future? They will just tell you, I wish... Maybe I wish to get married. Let's assume they are still in college or in the universities there. So I wish to get married, have my own children, have my own family, have my own house, have my own good car, driving, going to job, coming back, maybe passing by the school, picking up my kids. And all that is what I can think of. That's why God will never answer such kind of prayers. So all you can think is about yourself. When God will give you all this, that means you will have rest. You will be at ease. Remember the Bible used that way, at ease. So if you will be at ease, nothing will come up. Nothing new you can think of. Nothing. Nothing at all. God cannot give you such a thing. You need to think of something different. That God, if you give me the rest for once, you help me in my finances, you help me in my troubles, for once I'm at peace, all oh, I'll bring to you a temple. I'll build a temple. I'll bring something different before, ever known before. 
Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. So I want you to chat today and to ask of, your, of yourself, what is it that you think of? You think of being married. So if now you are not at rest because you are not married, okay, that is fine. But what do you see when you get to marriage? You'll have this rest. You'll have peace of mind. So what? How will you use that time? How will you use that opportunity? Read in the Bible. You will see how others are using such times, are using such opportunities. You are given, promoted to a certain position. Now in that position, you don't have so much things to do. You are not troubled as the other position you had when you were just a junior there in your office or whatever. You had so many things. Everybody is there giving you orders, giving you orders. So I never thought of something. You never could not think of anything new because of all these troubles. But now you are in that position where you are now giving out orders. Okay. You are in your office sitting there. What is the use of you being there? What do you do? David, Joseph is giving us the good example. When he was in prison, he was there. In the prison, he had to help these two guys there in the prison. Those uh, workers in the, from the king, uh, king's palace. But after that one, you see Joseph coming up with something. Else. When he was promoted to become the prime minister, he used that chance to collect food for the entire nation. And of course, even to other nations. After collecting food, he could not just sit down and rest. Using that time just to rest for the sake of resting. No, he brought up something different. He could save others. He could give people food out there. So this is a question we have today. If you are given such a time, what do you use it for? Why do I use that chance when God gives me this one? It has been your prayer, let's say. You have been asking God for this moment. Now, God has given you this one. How do you do that one? How do you use that one? You need this time. You need this time. When you have that time, you will think of something different. Let me finish up by showing you the last example in the Bible. Luke chapter 15 and verse 17. The story of the prodigal son. You know, if you go to the dictionary and ask for the meaning of the prodigal son, prodigal son is not just the same as the lost son. Son who was lost. Mm -mm, it is not. It is a very different son. Different because he called it God to the worst situation. But again, he could come up back to what he used to be. He can mess up. The son who messed up everything but again, he could come back. That's why he was called a prodigal son. Now, the story of the prodigal son, we all know the story here. He asked his father for the inheritance and he was given. So he went out to the other place. But the problem is he did not use it wisely. So he ended up in problems. And he now started to look for job, to be employed somewhere. After he has been looking for job here and there, here and there, and he could not get a good job for himself. He was hired to a certain farm to take care of the pigs there. So he had to stay there. And he could not even get food. The employment he had, he could not afford even to buy food. One day, verse 17, Luke chapter 15, verse 17, the Bible says, when he came to his senses, he said, after all the troubles, when he came to his senses, that means he forced himself to rest, to stop to think of all the problems. He settled it down. He came to his senses. He said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare and here I am, starving to death. Verse 18. He continued to, uh, by saying this one. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. The new thing the guy brought up is repentance. When he came to his senses, he remembered to repent. This is what he said. I have sinned. You don't see him realizing that he has sinned. All he could think of is to find a job. To find a job. All he could come up with is to look for a job. Maybe I can work in this way. Maybe I can try to do this way. Maybe I can join this one. Maybe I can go with that man. That is all he could think of. So he had been going around. Thank you for that verse. He has been going around trying to do one, two, three, four. He has been in the unrest situation all these days. So he managed to get a job. Yes. And he went to that job. But what he realized is he could not be given food. No food there. Because the country in that was where he was 
house had a problem with the food. That was not into the entire world because in his father's house there was food. So the other countries had food except this one that has come to this family. So he has this problem to solve out. And he tried to do one, two, three, four. But he never of them helped him to come into the uh, solution. So one day the Bible says he came to his senses. He came down to his senses and he remembered, I am the son. You see, he remembered, I am the That's why we need this time. Because when we come to these senses, when we come to rest, it's when we will remember who we really are. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. It's when we come to realize who we really are. He had to remember, I am the son. If I go to my father today, not only sons of my father are eating and have the leftovers and spare some food, but even the servants, those who my father has employed, has hired, they are eating and eating to the point that they have left, they do leave some food behind because they are satisfied. Mm. They are just hired men, just like me here. The difference is where I am right now. This is not me. This is not my position. So I have to go back to my father. So he could not remember who he used to be. He could not remember that his father is such a good and a great man to the point he has hired many people, not even one. Many men are hired in his father's home. Many of them. And his father had so many things to do. Even the children had to do so many things there. So he himself now is coming to his senses and say, who am I? You cannot think of who you are if you have not come down and rest. You cannot think of who you are. You may think you are somebody else. You may think you look like other people. You may think of all that you can think of. But when you come to your senses, you come down and think, who am I? This is the moment we need in life. Who am I? How can you come up with this idea? It's when God gives you the rest. You now start thinking of who you really are. And what new thing he brought up. That's why he said he called it the prodigal son. He thought of repenting. Something seemed to be very difficult, very impossible. How can he do this? After all he had done, after losing all, after doing all that he had done, after committing the adultery and all the matters, fornications, and doing all that he had done, misusing the resources that he had, after all this, can the man who was reached to this situation come back to his senses and think of repentance? A broken man like him, a finished man, can he come up with something different? Can he really come back? This is the guy that we think that he can no longer be back to what he used to be. It is completely and practically impossible. That's what we can think of. But we see that when he came to his senses, when he rested, he thought of who he, who he was. And after that, he brought up the new thing that I can sit down. I can sit down and do one thing. I go to my father and ask for him to forgive me. I can go and tell him, I have realized my problem, my mistake is not only unto you, even the heavens, because God was there watching me, all that I've been doing. Now I have realized even God is not pleased with what I have done. So father, I come to you and I come before you and before God. And you know, it's not only God. The heavens are the witnesses of all that I have done. So I have sinned against God up there. And the heavens are the witnesses. So I am coming for Why? Why was he thinking this way? When he came to his senses, it's when he could think of this. You cannot think of repentance if you do not come to such a rest. You cannot think of this one. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Here, the guy says, Mary's sharing to us, on Sundays, I used to visit my friends instead of going to church. Thank God now you do go to church, I believe. You do go to church nowadays. Why? God has already helped you to know how to use a weekend, an off day, how to use it. Hallelujah to God. So this man could think of something new when he came to rest. May God give you the rest. Again, I pray for you that you come to rest because I believe now you will think of something different. Think of the church. The church has got so many challenges around right now. Think of where you are coming from. 
Think of your family. Think of your own family, your very own, where you are, your home, your house there. Think of it. If you come to this rest, this calmness, to your senses, the Bible says you will bring up something different. You will come up with the new ideas. You will bring up something new. Hallelujah. I remember when I read in the Bible, uh, I, I, I read in science, there is this one, a scientist called Isaac Newton. Those who know him, you remember the story how he discovered gravity. How he came up with the idea of gravity. He was under such the apple tree, if I'm not mistaken, sitting there, resting there. When the apple fell down from the tree, is when he started to think about it. And he brought up to us the idea about the gravity. And now we are all in science matters using it. In everything, in fact, that we are doing, we are using. Why? The guy was sitting there, resting. Then he came. Imagine how many fruits how many leaves have been falling before him all these days but never thought of one but on this particular day he could think of this day why he had the rest may god give you this rest when you rest i believe in god when you rest you will have something different when you rest you will come up with another good and a new thing to do on this world in jesus name may god give you this one May God give you this one. Maybe uh, we finish those chapters and I show people something here. Let's go to uh, let's go to, to chapter Luke chapter 15 Luke chapter 15 verse 20. I want to show people something different here. One day I was taught this one and it was a very good thing. Maybe we understand this together today. Luke chapter 15 and verse 20. So he got up and went to his father but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and he was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. Just one, this, this verse only. I want to, 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 to realize something here. Why do you think his father did not send the servants around him to go and bring him? Why do you think he did not do this? During this day, their tradition, their culture, their norms, they had this. When you mess up to the point this guy has messed up, even if you try to come back, thank you for that, that verse, if, even if you try to come back home, you are not welcomed. You are not. Those neighbors around who know what you have done, those neighbors, even people from your house, from your home, they know what you have done around. They are aware of what you have done. Like this guy here. When they see you far coming, they used to go out, run to you, towards you. And when they reach there, they have a pot and they break it in front of you. Breaking it, they are giving you the sign that your life is completely broken. There is no a second chance for you. So, you are doomed. Your life is finished. That's what they used to do. So, whenever a guy like this one is coming back home, in that situation, they know he is broken. So, they don't welcome him. These neighbors and people from this home, they could come to him and reach to, him, to, 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 to this guy and break down the pot, saying that, our dear son, our dear brother, our dear relative, you are broken completely. You are no longer welcome to home. This is the reason why this father of this son here, when he saw his father far, he had himself to run towards him. Why? When your father or mother sees you in that situation and runs towards you and embraces you and welcomes you, other people will not come and break that pot before in front of you. They will not do that. Because your family, your father and mother have already welcomed you. They have already warned, uh, uh, warned you to come back. So this father, when he saw him still far, he had to run. Not even sending these people. Remember, he had these servants around him. I believe all the time the servants are just around him. So, And that's why you see, if you read the other verses, after he repented that guy, this father just said to his servant, go and bring one to three. So the servants were around. They were there. But by this time he knew, if they go, they will go with that pot and break it before my son. And therefore, my son will have to turn around and go back. But I want my son here. 
I want him here. I am giving him another chance. So he had to run himself. In that situation, he could not think of anything else but to embrace him. And while people were still looking at what is happening there, he has started to kiss his son. That means, my son, you are welcome back. Even if you were considered to be dead, but now I found you alive, you are welcome back. So the father had to do this to his son to prevent other people from finalizing his life and saying this guy is no longer needed here into this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. So now, what we need in this life to realize when God has given me the rest, when God has given me this opportunity, what do I do? What do I do? When everything is working out, there is something that I need to do. David thought of building a temple. And that temple, up to today, it is there. Up to date, we have that temple. Joseph, by his days, he gave food to people when he had the rest. He had to give out food. This prodigal son here, he could think of repenting and went back to his father. So, what about me and you? When we are given this kind of, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do when we are given this one? It's in time we challenge ourselves that God, you have given us a good family. We don't fight in this family. Everything is working very well. What should we do? My days when I do get the off day, oh, I have to do something. Really, I have to do something. When I have an off day, I am not coming to work. I am com not coming way here and there. I'm not doing, so I am to stay home. I must do something, something new. I must have something different. Otherwise, I know I will not have this time all the time. I will not have the rest all the time. The time to trouble, the time for one, two, three hours there to come. But whenever I, am get, whenever I get the chance, I must think of something different. So I also ask you today that we ask our God to open our eyes whenever we have this one. Whenever we have such a golden opportunity in our life, may God give us the eyes that are so open to bring up something new, to realize, to notice around something should be done. Something should be done in this life. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, glory to your mighty name now and forevermore. Thank you for the word of life that you have given us. And Lord, forgive us for misusing the opportunities that you are giving us. They are so special. And these opportunities are the golden ones. We can call them that way. And Lord, you are giving us. The question that we have within ourselves is how do we use such opportunities? How do we take the advantage of them? We see in the Bible people who are given. You gave them the rest and what they did. It's time that I pray for myself and for the church. I pray for everyone watching and listening now. The Lord will help us to understand this. These moments that will give us in lives. The moment that everything is well. Everything is good. It's not just a time to rest and do nothing. It is time you expect us. Just like David. Just like Joseph. To come up with something different. Our minds should be open. Lord we pray. Forgive us. That you have given us such times, but you have never used them well. Probably we have never used them so good. Now it's time we come to you. Please God, have mercy on us. Have mercy on every one of us in Jesus' name. And Lord, give us this, that we have this one in Jesus' name. That we use the opportunity that we have in this life in Jesus' name. I pray for everyone that may the Lord God grant you the rest in your life. May he you give peace of mind in your mind. You are soul to be brought to rest. You are spirit to be brought to rest. And by that time, may God open your eyes to note that there is something to be done in God's kingdom. Something is to be done in the church. Something is to be done in the family. Something is to be done in the nation where you are. Something is to be done for yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. And in this mighty name, Jesus, we believe. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now it's time that we have the opportunity to offer unto our God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much for this wonderful session that you have given us. Now it's time we offer and we give you our offerings. May you receive them 
as we give thanks to you, our almighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us today and for the service that God has given us. I believe it has blessed you. In one or another, you will start to think of what to do whenever you are given such opportunity by God in this life. Remember, they are not there always, these opportunities. They are not there every day here and then. God has this one to us in some times. And as gives us this one, we need to thank God for them and use them very well. Thank you for joining us today. Please welcome tomorrow. We will continue with the next session, the Swahili normal session that we have. May God be with you by this time. And remember to register for the spiritual camp that we have uh, started to prepare and organize. It will be on the last weekend of August. 30th and 31st and the first day of September, we will have the fourth spiritual camp. Please, you are welcome to join us. Register yourself for zero, uh, through 0764 and 444900. Then we can know that you will be joining us in the next coming spiritual camp. May God be with you. This is Chakula TV. Uhakika wa maisha. Yesu akawambia wapeni nini Chakula. Amen.